Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. Hey guys, Emily from the XY team here. Now, if you missed last week's episode, let me quickly get you up to speed. Ben from XY is taking over as we bring you a brand new series looking at the three P's, plan, produce, profit, which we believe are the key elements that make a great financial advice offering and business. In today's episode, Ben sits down to chat with Andrew DeBono, director, advisor, and total legend of Peak Wealth Management to find out what went into the planning phase of his business, which kicked off in November, 2018. This episode might be short and sweet, but it is full of plenty of financial planning gold. As you scale your advice business, are you frustrated with the amount of compliance, paperwork, and staffing issues? Virtual Business Partners specializes in helping financial services firms in four areas, admin, power planning, bookkeeping, and marketing. Virtual Business Partners work with you to get your business offshore ready. This includes identifying what tasks need to be done locally and what functions can be managed offshore. Advisors find they can reduce back office costs by between 50 and 75% and significantly improve their task turnaround times. For more information, go to virtualbusinesspartners.com.au. Andrew DeBono, uh, rising star, superstar, uh, mate, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, we're talking about this uh, plan, plan produce, produce profit uh, series, talking all about planning your business and uh, super keen to chat because of the fact that because of how fresh your business is, mm-hmm. I see you out there getting out and about kicking some, kicking some goals, which is awesome to see, but uh, I, 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 I wanted to grab you in at this early stage to see... Yeah, what well, the lessons and uh, you know how things are how things are going. So, mate, welcome. Thank you, mate. Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Great. So, look before we before we jump into the the questions, I've got a few a few quick ones for you. So, uh, time. When did this is a bit funny, but time. When did you start? Yeah. So I started uh, November back in it was I think November thirteenth last year, twenty eighteen. Great. So not the best timing when you think about it in the lead up to Christmas, <laughs> but um, had to be done. And yeah, didn't want to make any excuses really. Perfect. So we're eight months ish in. Yeah. Uh, it's what's your team look like? Uh, yeah, just just me, myself, and I. <laughs> solo, solo, good. <laughs> yeah, did, did solo. Yeah, did exactly the same thing myself for yeah. uh, for the first year, apart from the VA that I neglected for a little while until she quit. Uh, <laughs> so you can probably work for that. Uh, what? How long have you um, have you been have you been in the industry for though? Yeah, so I started in it was 2014, so second of October 2014. There you go. Okay. Good memory, remember those dates. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, cool. Yeah. So coming up fifth year, yeah, fifth year, right. yeah. Um, and previously announcer, yeah, announcer. just announcer. Yeah, so it was announcer. Then they um, they did merge with uh, in focus, but. Um, the branding was still announced when I left, so I think it's just changed earlier this year. Perfect, yeah. And uh, how much time at the moment are you spending working in and on your business? <laughs> um, do you want a percentage on value a week- of my day? or <laughs> yeah, no, on a weekly basis. On a weekly basis, I'd probably, I reckon I'd be doing about, on average, 11 hour days. Okay. So, yeah, five hours. Five hours. Five days? Yeah, five days. Yeah, five five days. days and then sometimes throw in a... Saturday, probably every second week I'm doing a Saturday for client meetings. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And uh, oh, can I ask you revenue? Yeah, go for it. Um, so I finished up last year 60000 bucks. So the first sort of six months. Okay. Um, this year I'm pushing forward. So I think I've got – I worked out actually back in the last year part of my planning was um, – I've got about seventy thousand bucks of business to fall this like this side of the year. Yeah, um, and then I've got ongoing revenue built up around eighty thousand. Wow, that's cool. It's pretty good. Eight yeah. months in, mate. That's yeah. Well so done. it's, it's okay. gone. Yeah, it's gone pretty quickly. That's great. We were just had, having chat just before, and uh, yeah, talking about that, you were saying it was easier than easier than you thought. It would be. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I thought it would be a little bit more difficult. Um, I guess it was just good that you know, announcer built a, a great. Um, 
great business which allowed people to succeed and, and you know build clients um, organically and naturally and I think I've learned very well from that and um, once you go out on your own and you've got no salary um, spotting, yeah. yeah, you just go a bit harder, I guess. Some pretty serious motivation, yeah. uh, behind the, yeah. you know, making it happen, get, get a few pennies yeah. in, the, in the bank. So, That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah, and I think also what I said was that you know, before when you're very early on, you've just got these new clients, everyone's new, and you know, there's there's no ongoing or le- much yeah. less ongoing stuff until you really build up yeah. that, and then inquiries come through, and then the, the questions and the reviews and the bits and pieces. So. It's that bit of uh, I found at the start. I was like, oh yeah, this is easy. Yeah. And then it gets to about eighteen months, and you go, holy crap! Like yeah. more and more and more. So yeah, I'm um, waiting for the reviews part. To, I'm starting to plan for that at the moment. Yeah, making sure I've got a good process in line for that, and um, yeah, just trying to be on the forefront of it. Really. Yeah, very important. Yeah. Good to hear. Yeah. And uh, what's your what is your client? What is your ideal client look like? Do you have a specific niche that you work with? Um, I've gone down so um, there's no like specific reason for it, um, but I did target um, marketing and advertising professionals. So I, I did um, I did a HBDI test to understand how like, my brain thinks. I'm pretty analytical um, and numbers focused. Yeah. And I, I looked at myself and my relationship with my partner Sarah, and she's very creative and on the red side, she's a school teacher, like an arts yeah. and English teacher. So we're complete, like we're polar opposite in terms of the way we're thinking, but we work yeah. very well in terms of, you know, as a team um, combined and, and also, um, yeah, like emotionally and, and the way we communicate as well. And I thought, all right, let's try and target people in that, you know, creative space or, um, yeah, creative yeah, creative and emotional sort of space. And, and I thought marketing, marketing and advertising would tick that box and, and branding. Yeah. And also, so far it's worked really well, but, but also the fact that, those people are all located in the CBD, like all those yeah, employers yeah. are in the CBD, so it's easy for me to meet, so I don't waste heaps of time sitting in city traffic. Um, I don't have to go on massive commutes. So Perfect. Yeah, it's and, well. And did the, did the fancy suits come after the niche or did you have the fancy suits ready? That's just a <laughs> nice natural client. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, did, um, I did actually loosen it up a little bit, to be honest. I used to, uh, previously at the answer, I used to always have a tie, um, always, you know, well manicured suit. Now I've sort of, I, I just change it depending on, on who I'm going to see that day. Like it's, yeah, I, yeah. I don't have a no formula to that at all, to be honest. Yeah, I know that when uh, when Ray came into the business, he was performing from a very traditional uh, company where it was a lot of, you know, you wear the suit every yeah. day, and, and that's how it works. Yeah, but, uh, I threw that out a long time ago. And yeah, I think, uh, I think clients like that. You being a bit more just genuine, like yeah. not maybe genius is the wrong word, but a bit more you. You're not trying to put on any pretenses, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you just you let your work stand for itself. Yeah. And, it's know, very important, that's... I think, especially when you're a one man show. You can't go trying to you know, fake Impressive it people. really. Yeah, well, there's no that's point it. trying to fake it. Yeah, you can't that's hide it. behind much. <laughs> yeah, I know when I started, I started wearing t-shirts to the office, and then I'd occasionally have a client that would come in and. It, like it would be like a, someone making, say, half a million bucks yeah. or someone with like a whole bunch of assets behind them, something like that. And I think at the side, I think, oh, should I should I put on a shirt? And then I was like, no, nah, I shouldn't because mm. like why like why should I change for that? Way. It's just yeah. that's that's how it is. And yeah. you know, if you connect with what we do, then yeah. you're then great. Let's uh, let's let's do some stuff together. Uh, if not, then that's that's okay. Yeah, exactly right. It's all at the end of the day. It's all really. What's in your What's in your mind and what's in your heart, and, and so you can make that work. And there's no no real uh, difference whether you're wearing a suit, t shirt, or a singlet. Surprised you're wearing that part. Oh, mate, I've got or track bands. I've got some runners on here. Um, shorts in summer. It's a bit It's a bit chilly for the shorts. Yeah, good. Moment, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. And so, what areas are you are you advising people on? What does a standard sort of client get? Yeah, so pretty much everything besides self made suit plans. Right. Yeah. So mortgages. Uh, oh no, I don't do mortgages. Okay. So I do. Well, yeah, all the cleaning stuff. Yeah. So um, yeah, insurance, super, uh, investments, um, uh, margin lending, uh, what else? Estate planning, um, retirees. Like, yeah, it's pretty much all that. I don't have too much retiree work though. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, but pretty much everything besides so separate suit funds stayed away from the separate suit funds space. Fair enough. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit of a, it's a, it's a complicated space. And I find that with that sort of stuff, it's, 
it's hard when I was just chatting to someone before and uh, your when you build when you want to build your um, your model like your back end at the moment for you so you can sort of patch it together yeah. when you start building your team yeah. then uh, yeah you, you're looking going well how do I how do I allow my team to work efficiently as well and the more different sort of processes and the, yeah. the things that you need to do the more difficult it becomes to to do that so yeah. I think you got to stick to stick to your lane yeah exactly right and I think. Um, I don't know, the belief side of it for me as well. Like I'm not a big fan of them and mm. I don't really like, um, you know, I've just seen so many, it's like so many super funds which are done poorly yep. and they've had a detrimental impact on the client. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a bit of that out there. There's, there's, a, there's, a, bit of, there's a fair few shops in the in the property space yeah. as well, like Flogger Self-Managed Super yeah. Fund, Flogger Property, uh, not so good. But yeah. also, I, for me, I don't know, my view is like if you're, for younger people, then they've already they're trying to buy property. They yeah. want to buy their home or yeah, they want exactly. to buy investment property. Uh, for older people, they've probably already got a bunch of property. Yeah. So it's, it's like cool. that for me, I don't think unless you're unless you've got a massive share portfolio and the frank dividends yeah. in self yeah. fund, that can be quite good. Yeah, but so other than that, or property, I don't see any reason for it. It gets so much cheaper with so much less work. Uh, from, <laughs> from a wrap or from a you know from a bunch of the industry funds yeah. coming out with a lot of good stuff these days as well. So, um, cool, man. So t- tell us a bit about your the back your background and then what led you to what led you to launch your business and you your story to get to here. Yeah, so so background. I was sort of um, I was pretty fortunate because I was um, when I started now I was twenty one. And I got into the space of advising uh, pretty much straight away from finishing uni. So I did do, I think it was like, oh, it's probably three or four months full time uni, full time work. Um, but then finished that and then graduated um, and then got licensed pretty much straight away. So yeah, I was 20, I think I just turned 22 when I first wow. got licensed. And I, um, yeah, it was, it was a bit of a sink or Sink or swim sort of mentality, and it was like, here, go have a crack. We've given you the opportunity, go for it. Yeah. Um, so I started off then at uh, 22, started advising pretty much straight away, and started building that client base from scratch. Um, so we weren't given, like, there's no book or anything like that that I had. It was all organic. Right. Um, and I built it up. Um, I, by the time I'd left, there was 89 clients. So I built a book of 89 right. clients in about four years, which is yeah. good. Um, and then, yeah, a few, few things sort of started to change. And then, um, you know, well, I'd spoken to the guys there, announcer, and, and um, there's a little bit of an opportunity for me to go out of my own state license with focus. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I thought about that and I thought, all right, I've done it once before, so I think I can do it again. So, yeah, yeah just, just stepped out of my comfort zone and, and gave it a crack, really. Right. I sort of want to be the master of your own destiny at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's uh, having flexibility in, in what you do and, and wanting, if you want to do things differently, then being able to to do that as well, I yeah, think it's, it's yeah, it's good to to have that, that element of, of control. So you're licensed with Infocus now, yeah, okay, yeah. great. Sounds like a, a good group from yeah, from they're very good, yeah, yeah, very stringent in the compliance stuff. It's um, frustrating at times, but you have to. Um, <laughs> I definitely respect them and, and um, very you appreciate them. Yeah, you very appreciate them. Yeah, exactly right. It's yeah, good. it's good. So tell me, what was the uh, what? How did you approach sort of planning around your business and, and creating what your service proposition would ultimately be? Yeah, um, I guess I kind of I used a lot of the things that I'd learned previously because um, I did genuinely believe a lot of those things were were good and the best thing for the client. Um, I did. I really did focus on trying to help time poor people. Um, and sort of trying to create a, an environment or a or a process which would assist those sort of people and make it nice and efficient and easy for them. Yeah. Um, so you know, a couple of things there is when I sort of built the business, I wanted to focus on um, the foundations, making sure that people's foundations are in order. Um, and it, it's it's pretty crazy to be honest. Um, even with all the the you know the news articles. Barefoot investor, the posts and all that sort of stuff. There's, there's still so many people with multiple super accounts. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just little things like that. You're consolidating that, getting some you know, proper insurance in place, estate planning, and then getting a bit of a cash flow sort of strategy. Yeah. Um, and then from then, you know, focus on the ongoing service with 
they're being proactive and they're trying to help them, you know, achieve their goals. So very, very goal driven, really. Okay. Yeah. And and what it, what's um what's changed since since you started? And I know I I suppose it's only a really short short yeah. thought, not you know too yeah. long in the grand scheme of things. But what what have you changed since November? Yeah, good. Um, so since I first started, I was. One of the there's a couple of things, and, and these were part of the reasons for me going out on my own as well. It was um, around the investment strategies and with that and discussing it with clients. Um, I was a pretty big believer of the model portfolios uh, previously, okay. and it was something that we used to, you know, it was something that we discussed with clients quite a lot, and we were very proud of it. Yeah, um, I think now, and as I evolved and, and actually learned more in the advice, um, you know, profession, I, I find that. Advisors building model portfolios and working all that you know all that hard for them um, don't add a significant amount of value. Invest, to baby. Yeah. Right. yeah. So uh, that was one thing. So the, the investment philosophy um, has changed since I initially begun. Uh, that was something I was I was always thinking about it, but it was something that I didn't really want to. I just didn't see any value for the client at all. So I thought, you know, that's. Yeah, let's let's adjust that and make that what, what I believe is appropriate. And what does that look like now? So I do multi manager. Um, I do mainly index sort yep. of investments. So um, Vanguard's a pretty common one. Um, and then I sometimes have a discussion around um, clients' um, perception and, and, and um, risk appetite, vol- volatility, risk appetite. So yep. I'll look at blending some like dynamic asset allocation sort of funds in there, but still pretty low cost, really. Right. Yeah, I find it's it's one of those things that like, when I first started my – well, actually, when I started in the previous business that, that I was working in, that they, it was a mortgage broking and, uh, and a, a, a lawyer yeah. that they brought me in to build a financial advice offering. And, yeah. Uh, I, so, and I'd never done investments because it came from Dixon Advisory yeah, where right, they yeah. separated yeah. out the – Investment advice, which yeah. is they're in a bit of hot water for yeah. at the moment, <laughs> uh, from the financial advice where I was just yeah. put that one on the record. Yeah. Um, and they, uh, so I, I'd never done investment advice before, right? So they, so I was, I started doing some research and I was talking to a bunch of guys, um, Jeff Gurek from the, they were yeah, the last time, yeah. the time, the Alaska guys, yeah. champions, shout out Jeff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And was asking them about what they did in their business, asking a bunch of other people as well. And like I do with a lot of things, I sort of figure out what I think works for me yeah. um, with, the, with my clients and my service and the way that I want to go about things, but then mer- merge it together. And uh, I started building out these portfolios and I got my spreadsheet and I'm yeah. looking at the reports <laughs> and I'm looking at the returns and I'm looking at, I'm going, holy crap, I'm like, these, these clients are going to do pretty good, yeah. you know? And the reality is they actually did do quite well. The portfolios themselves performed quite well, but I had the ones at different levels. So there's like an up to $50,000 portfolio, the up to a hundred, $150,000 portfolio. (laughs) And uh, I, uh, yeah, like the, over time when it got up to, I was getting like half a million, a million dollar clients. And then when it came over to review the portfolios once a quarter, Oh my god! It took so much time, and it was like, yeah, yeah. Well, the, yeah, a little bit of that, but more just doing the research on the funds themselves and making sure that it was the right mix, that it was that they were, everything was performing, that the managers yeah. weren't changing, that the yeah. strategies weren't changing, all the things. And I'm just going, holy crap! Like, surely this is not the best use of my time. And I actually started getting really nervous because I was like, in addition to the time wasting, I was like, I'm going to be managing more and more and more money like yeah. i'm managing millions of dollars yeah, of people's yeah. money which yeah. i'm going holy shit like that's pretty, <laughs> pretty serious business and uh i just thought to myself yeah like this there, there's got to be a better way and I, for me we're like almost 100 percent passive now yeah and i find that that i know when i put someone in the vanguard high growth index fund i know exactly what that fund is going to do and yep. you're never going to get that angry phone call if you do that it's just like where the markets yeah. are so i think that approach is good and plus it allows you to focus on the things that are Important as an advisor, we're going to have to focus on yeah, exactly as a right. business owner, you've got even more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I think that yeah, it's it's about where is the true value. So I think yeah, that's so, a great one. Yeah, I think it was um, I think it was from um, that was a Morning Star presentation where they brought out a wheel which um showed how advice added value to clients. Yeah, and it was a fantastic thing, and, and like 
the the building the portfolios was I think one thirteenth of the yeah. total wheel. So it's like, all right, why would you spend you know fifty percent of your time building yeah. the portfolios when it's only adding value of yeah, or well, fifty percent of your time talking about it? Yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly right. So and you build your you build your offer around that, and then you cop it when the, when there's a decline in in market. Exactly so. right. Yeah. Cool. So the investments have changed. Any yeah. other any other substantial changes since um, November? Yeah, the fee the fee model. So I stepped away from the percentage based fee. I think Clayton had a great discussion about that. Um, I saw that video on LinkedIn the other day, and oh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so I stepped away from the the percentage based fee um, model and, and went to complete fixed fees. Okay. Do you are you a commission on insurance? Yeah, I do do commission on okay. insurance. Yeah, still do that. And yeah, look, I think it's. It, I was just having this uh, this chat on another podcast with with James Millard, yep. and, and we transitioned to that to fixed fee only, no percentage based fees. I yep. think percentage is a is a you know almost within reason. It's a somewhat accurate way to to charge for the the fees at different levels. Like a fifty thousand yeah. dollar portfolio yeah. is not much work; you don't get paid much. Yeah. A five hundred thousand dollar portfolio, it is more work, but it's actually the more the more different levels that you get, I think it, it skews things out. And again, it's uh, I think it's that transparency mm. is, is, is very valuable. Yeah, for clients as well. Yeah, I think so as well. I think so as well. It's been um so far, it's been um, taken pretty well to be honest. Yeah, great. And so, do you have different sort of tiers, or is everyone custom in terms of the service that you give them and the fees that you charge? Yeah, no. So everyone's so I do have sort of three tiers. Um, they're all in, aligned with um. With my, my business name, like Peak Wealth Management, so I've got the the basic sort of package, which is um, uh, at the summit. So they're just beginning, so just yeah. starting off. Then I've got um, on the climb to the second tier, and the third tier is um, at the peak. Okay. So it sort of breaks out. Yeah, it, it's the service package is different for each of those uh, sort of three levels. Yeah. Um, majority of my clients, however, have fallen in the middle, sort of on the climb, um, or wealth accumulators, really. Okay. Yeah, that's what I've attracted so far. Yeah, good. Yeah. Well, I think you sort of tend to attract people yeah. around your own age. Yeah, well. I agree. Yeah, um, I agree. The next, so, so, and how did how did you come up with those packages? What was the pro, what was the process that went behind it? <laughs> um, no, nah, not really, not really. It was just I felt like I looked back at um, the client base I built up, and I felt like there were three, you know, people typically or three um, typical clients so there was you know people who were just starting out looking at trying to get into investments struggle with saving and cash flow then there was the people who had something behind them but just had great incomes but didn't know what to do with it and then there was the people who have done really really well um got a nice little asset base and they just need someone to help guide them through those difficult times you know the pensions and all that sort of stuff and and um and you're just setting things up for for the future really so it's a bit more and uh, not as not as hands-on yeah, makes sense. But um, yeah, so I just thought, all right, there's those sort of three people, and um, I'll build three packages around that. And do you, char- in terms of from a charging model side yeah. of things, do you charge? Is it a standard fee for the different ones, or is it custom depending on the person and work that's involved? Yeah, it, good question. It's um, it's pretty custom. So, and the reason why is you do get the odd person who's got. Five or six super funds in there. Yeah. You know, so I have to sort of build it. Yeah, I have to build it for each person individually. But majority of people fall in similar categories. Yeah. Um, there is just the the one off person where you've got to you know, charge the extra because the more yeah. extra work. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. And so thinking back on the last you know eight and a bit months. Yeah. What's um What's one thing that uh that didn't work that you were almost sure would. <laughs> Um, one thing that didn't work that I was certain would, I would say, all right, I had a I had a very good friend of mine, and um, he's got a fantastic mortgage broker business. Um, he completely specialises in working with lawyers. Okay. Um, so just yeah, very niche barristers, lawyers. Um, very, he's a very good friend of mine, and um. And we caught up um, you know, prior to me beginning the business and he said, mate, I want an advisor to refer my clients to. I trust you, um, vice versa. And he goes, if you can do a great job and then you can refer me people. Um, yeah, so we got into a little bit of a relationship. We were sharing an office together as well. Um, yeah. And I think I saw some videos. Yeah, you want to see some videos there. Yeah, that was his, um, his, uh, one of his, his business partner. And um, 
I just don't get along with lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't work. Like yeah. it was, um, we, we were, you know, we were certain it was going to work and it just, yeah. There's right. a couple that came on, but yeah. um, we looked at the data. So I think I got, it was 33 referrals from him. Yeah. Um, 31 of those were lawyers and I only managed to get two of them on board. Oh, wow. The other two, um, so the two to make 33, they were, um, one was in telecommunication sales and the other one was an emergency doctor and his wife was a, um, a marketing manager. Okay. Um, I signed both of those two up. Right. Okay. So Interesting. It just didn't work. Yeah. I think it's like that thing you mentioned with your partner and yeah. the different dynamics that, uh, yeah, some people, if it's too much the same, you just don't, don't click. Yeah. I, know, I know that for us that we do a lot of work with sales, yeah. uh, uh, creatives, yeah. um, a bit of a marketing, advertising, communications yeah, they, yeah. as well, like lovely PR with our PR ladies. We've got a ton of them. They all yeah. said mobile well. I think every single one of our clients is PR is women. Um, yeah. But, yeah, you don't it's, – it's people, yeah, that you have to have that affinity there. Like there's a, there's a yeah. level of that and, and the match. So. Yeah, so, yeah, I just didn't get along with them. Yeah, it was – I'll certainly get away from anyway. So what are you, you just decided to <laughs> uh, we, just... Yeah, I do. Yeah, exactly right. So we just, um, uh, we, we didn't, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't like we just completely split, but it's just like, all right, guys, it's, well, it's not working. Yeah, it's not working. Right. Um, and I think we just need to be a bit more selective on whether people, um, mm. on people you should refer to me and vice versa. So, yeah. so far, it's going on. Yeah, cool. And what's, uh, what's something that did work that you didn't think would? Yeah, the um, the biggest thing would be then I was getting great leads and it started off like straight away. I think the first week, 10 leads, and I'm like, all right, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> um, none of them converted and I went, shit, I need to find plan B. Um, yeah. So I started thinking about um, other ways I could build business and, and LinkedIn was something that I have used in the past. Uh, so I just got you know pretty active on LinkedIn, um, doing some videos, um, connecting with people. So I was being pretty forward. I think you do that quite a bit as well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, trying to book in meetings and speak to people, go for coffees, and that worked really well. Yeah, right. That worked really well. It was um, great reception. And, and you invest a fair bit of time in it, but I think the time you invest in it is so worth it. Yeah. I think it's it. For me, I found that, uh, and I know that it's, it's not that, it, it, that other people have had success on platforms like Facebook and Instagram. I know yeah. like James, who I was, I was yeah. talking to just before, he has done a lot on Facebook and yeah. got a lot of traction through that way. Yeah. For me, I've, I've really struggled with those with those Same, platforms. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Although Instagram, we got a, a lot of action at the start, although it's, it's sort of come off now that they've changed all their, how they do things. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I found that LinkedIn is great. Everyone's there. It's a lot of professionals. It's yeah. the sort of people. It's 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 a yeah, exactly right. You can tell. You can find your target client or your perfect client so so easy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sales and ad is uh, yeah, it's great. Awesome. Yeah, like it's the targeting that's on there is, is pretty. Uh, it's fantastic. Pretty well, yeah, so. very good. Great. Yeah. Uh, cool. And so, what um, if you if you could go back to November, what would you what would you have done differently? Um, Try to to get a different um, referral network. <laughs> nah. um, what would I have done differently? I would have. I don't think there's too much different I would do. Like, Lucky you've got plenty of time to, <laughs> to, to figure out some stuff. Um, no, the, like I think I think I executed it pretty well. Like I never, I, I really, um, I was pretty concerned around the cost side of things, so I didn't want to put myself into a big hole um, to get going, you know, building websites and all that sort of stuff. Um, there's probably, a, there's a couple of things where I would like to fix up, which I need to fix up, and that's probably with the SEO and making sure you, know, you come up on Google pretty quickly and you're not like three pages behind and yeah. um, just fixing up the website and, and fixing up a bit more about that, the company branding. I think um, I think I've done fantastic on my personal branding yeah. but not so much the company branding, which you kind of want to pair, you know, you want them to be working together well. Yes. That's probably one thing, that the marketing and the branding side of things. I've done that. I've just tried to do that in a, a low-cost manner. Yeah. Uh, I think it's easier for your personal brand, right? Like when you when you do that, because it's just you getting yourself out there. Exactly. Social media is a great tool for that. Yeah. People, people invest. Uh, they, they people are more attracted to an individual than a company because you've got to build this whole brand identity that sits yeah. behind it. So it's definitely you know much more challenging. I know something that 
we felt that we uh, people know really me, but the, the business it's still it's that you know strength behind. So yeah, yeah certainly. You, yeah. You've got to uh, yeah, you've got to try and sort of find that balance. Yeah, and I think that's important as well if you want to um you know attract uh, people to work with you as well. Not 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 clients, but um, if you want to build you know employees and all that sort of stuff, I think you yeah. need to think about that and have a good brand because otherwise. It looks like it's just you and that employee is not going to feel special. Yeah, uh, for sure. I didn't agree with that completely. Yeah. I know that you're you're still like flying solo, but from and we were chatting just before about we've we've grown like our team. Yeah, by the you know more than double in the last six months. Uh, but I, but both like both of the we've got Luana and Chloe who joined joined us from uh, on the, like client success yeah. live, like yeah. future, future advisors, yeah. but still is still just helping out behind the scene. Well, behind and in front of the scene, but uh, with that that sort of a CSO type yeah. type role. Well, yeah. And for both of those guys, they were they wanted to work in a business that they they what they could see that there was some tangible stuff behind it and that they 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 had seen some of the stuff that we put out there and then they wanted to, especially I think with the Royal Commission and you know all of these changes and you see that the, the businesses where the business models are holding on to the past they're really focused on shit. How do we, um, how are we going to protect these revenue streams or how are we going to yeah. replace the revenue streams yeah. that are there or that, how are we going to get up to the clients <laughs> and how are we going to make sure that we're, you know, not doing any of the things that you're not supposed to do or that they're now telling you that yeah. you're not supposed to do. And it really, it distracts all of the focus and attention from how do we create an awesome client experience? How do we make sure that we're, we're growing well? Yeah. How do we building our brand and authority and marketplace? Uh, so, I think, yeah, I, I was blown away when uh, Chloe, who was the, the most recent sort of team member that, that's joined with us, that, that uh, she was like, oh, yeah, I knew. And I put, and also from a recruiting perspective, that I put the thing out on LinkedIn. I used Seek. We tried to recruit yeah. ourselves with the user recruiters, didn't have a great experience. Yeah. And that was how we got the person. I had like 85 applications from I'll see, Seek. I'll see. Yeah. But one application from LinkedIn, and it was the person we yeah. hired at the end. So I think there's definitely that. Benefits of the brand uh, yeah. on top of the... Did you advertise that through your personal um, LinkedIn or your company yeah. LinkedIn? Per- personal. Yeah. I didn't advertise it. I just shared it. I put it on the and I just shared it. just shared it out and I asked the other guys to share it around as yeah, well. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, it yeah. works. So. <laughs> yeah, no, interesting. So I think, um, I think LinkedIn is not the best... Um, like the best platform to be trying to build a uh, business brand. Yes. I think LinkedIn is your personal self. Yeah. Um, but I think maybe the Facebook and the, the Instagram might be more appropriate for the actual right. brand. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I've done a little bit of stuff with, with the Pivot company page, but I know that I get, I'll get, you know, probably maybe 20% of the, yeah. like the views on videos or the, the engagement that you know, what I do from a personal perspective. I think yeah. it's just there. Their algorithm probably yeah. just wants to place the advertising. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me what. So what? Um, what is one? What would be your one top tip for someone that was that was about to go out on their own, about to plan a, a, an offering, or yeah. trying to plan an advisor, an employed advisor trying to plan their offering within a business uh, or a, a, with a, a bigger business that way, or someone trying to reshape their their offer? What would what would your top tip be? Um, I think. Look, personally, and, and probably one of the, the things I'm proud of, but also I think is is helped me significantly, is don't try and build a business. Like I think if you're going into the self-employed world and in financial advice, um, I think you should be confident enough that you can build that business organically. Yeah. And don't go out there spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on, on a client or anything like that. Um, I find like. And the reason why I say that is I think if you did do that, then you're just going to be concerned and focused on trying to maintain mm. that revenue because yes. you've either borrowed money or tipped in a lot of money, yep. um, which means you're, not going to, you're probably not going to have a positive um, experience when building the business. Um, so I think if, you, if you're going to do it, make sure you're confident enough to be able to do it organically. Um, and if you're confident enough to do it organically, give that a crack um, and, and it'll work out. To work out, so I think that's probably the, yeah, I think that's the biggest the biggest tip I would give. Yeah, I think you get the most satisfaction out of doing it all organically as opposed to you know, relying on some recurring revenue that you bought yeah. from someone else. I agree completely. I think I you know, I started to pivot from scratch, and yeah. I've spoken to other people that have bought 
forks yeah. and they they what you know you are in my view from speaking to them that you end up you're stuck with that model and then people have engaged under they haven't engaged with you and you're not nice no, exactly right. you're nice, yeah. uh, you're advertising you know right. uh, that yeah that then you have to try and bend someone to your model which is very difficult i learned this when i was in the last company that i was at where we started with a very basic model and then I built all this stuff that I thought was cool, sort of the start of what we, what, what I, the yeah. sort of advice we provide today. And uh, then I tried to change it. I was like, oh, I've got this great thing. And people were like, oh, no, but I just want this other thing that I've already, yeah. that I've already got. So uh, I think it's sort of the same thing to a degree with the, with the client. Plus, you also don't have the freedom that you've got now where you can go out and build relationships, build your brand, do the things, build yeah, your processes. Right. You're too busy. You hit the ground running. Going, oh crap! I've got to, I've got to, like, got to pay the rent on this book, and you know, yes. and then you, you do all, all the all 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 stuff. Yeah, like it's. Uh, yeah. I think it's a tricky one. So great. I yeah, love it. yeah. I think it's good. And also that I think for me that you, you, you know, you say do you do you bring on eighty thousand bucks of revenue. You're paying, you know, two hundred two hundred fifty thousand dollars for that. Um, yeah, exactly. Right. It's, it's when you can just go hustle for you know, and you'll work hard for it, but yeah. uh, you've got people that are in your model. And- yeah, but it's probably the same amount of work as if, um, as if you bought a book and had to maintain that book. So it's kind of, yeah, you're getting what you want. It might take a little bit longer, but you're getting what you want yeah. in the long run. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, uh, love love those tips. I think uh, plenty of gold there. Tell me a couple of quick ones for you before we wrap up. Yeah. What's your biggest, biggest uh, stuff up, oops moment uh, <laughs> or mistake? Um, whoa. the first one was taking on a few clients. Um, I had one para, so I outsourced my power planning and I had a power planner who didn't have enough capacity to take on, you know, I had five clients come on board at once, didn't have enough capacity to, um, complete those SOAs in a timely manner. Right. So that was probably my biggest mistake. So then I went, all right, I need to find another power planner to make sure this doesn't happen again. So I can, if I thought we'll over, overload, palm yeah. it off to them. Make sure you got it. Yeah. So I, that was the biggest thing. I thought, oh, I did, I, I, I thought mm-hmm. about keeping the costs low. So I had a power planner that yeah. um, was pretty cheap and he was you know, pretty nimble, but there was some times where he would take a little bit, bit, a little bit too long. Yeah. And went, all right, I need to find, uh, I need to work out, I need to find uh, someone else just in case. Yeah. yeah. Important. Cool. Yeah. What's the best? What's the best piece of advice you've got? Best people. Oh. You don't have to say if it was from Roxy or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, look, I was um, I was thinking his business partner more so um, Ray, and I think that was just back yourself. Like, I think if you if you've got to you know just just get out there and give it a crack. Um, I think. It's all about your personality and how you work with people. Um, if you're good at that, then it's not that hard to start up your own business. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of little things here where you, you're learning, like, shit, I've got to pay fast this quarter, really? <laughs> so you get those little shots here and there. But, it's, um, but yeah, like I think if, you, if, you're gonna, if you're good at relationships, because we are in a relationship game, if you're good yeah. at relationships, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be starting your own business. Yeah. I think a lot of people, like a lot of advisors out there that I've met, um, that probably could, well, they definitely could start their own business and they just haven't done it because they're scared or whatnot. Um, yeah. yeah. Or don't want to do the work. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been interesting. I've been mean, asking everyone how many hours they work uh, on this thing. And, um, yeah. You know, it's, uh, there's definitely a lot of, uh, I think it takes a unique person to go, yeah, yeah I'm going to go, yeah. go, go for that. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's good. And so, um, what's your what's a top hack hack for organising yourself? I'm a bit old fashioned. Eh? I've got my little red book here, yeah. um, and I literally write it down on the train. In. So I live pretty far out of Sydney, so I'm about an hour train ride into Sydney. So I literally organise my day um, every day on the train with my little red book. Yeah. So I write it down and then just go through it when I get in the office and start ticking them off. Nice. Yeah, so just I don't know, write it down. Oh, I, I write it down. I know there's different processes and people do workflows and things like that, but yeah, writing it down just works for me because it always just sticks in my head. Yeah. Good. And last question, what uh, what is your spirit animal? <laughs> uh, I reckon I'm an eagle. Eagle? Oh, yeah. oh look out. Yeah. yeah. Majestic. I like yeah. it. I see that, yeah. Even though I'm scared of heights. <laughs> 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 
Nice, mate. Well, thank Andrew, you. thank you very much for coming in. Uh, plenty of plenty of gold there. Uh, Plan Produce Profit Series, guys. Uh, check it out, mate. Thank you once again. Thank you.